Hello everyone again, it's Jackie Jones and this is lecture number six about professionalism and personal practice. This is module one and we're going to be dealing with or chatting about professionalism and professional identity. And then um, module two will be talking about personal conduct and three duties of being a legal practitioner and um, a model for ethical decision making. So what is professionalism? This statement on slide three um, sits well in the legal sector. I'm sure many of you will know the author, of, um, the writer Dal Pont, his book you're probably very familiar with from your ethics course. He states that while there is no single universal definition of professionalism, there are three core attributes that stand out. Firstly, special skill and learning, and certainly we do have that um, in the legal profession. Secondly, a principal goal is that of public service. And again, I think that um, the concept of justice for everyone in the community um, is one that resonates with all people that have been through a law degree and then um, move into practice. And third, self-regulation and autonomy. And again, um, that, as you can appreciate, sits well with uh, our legal profession as we are quite regulated. So it's very important to start thinking about professional identity and image. How does that link in with professionalism? I quite like the... Um, definition of um, professional identity set out there by Hall, O'Brien and Tang and also um, the, the comment by Mallory Stark in an interview with Professor Laura Morgan Roberts about the fact that your professional image is the set of qualities and characteristics that represent perceptions of your competence and character as judged by your key constituents, so clients, superiors, etc, colleagues. So bearing that in mind, and given where you now are in your law degree, namely um, right at the end and just about to be admitted as a legal practitioner, I'd encourage you all to reflect on how you personally will answer the following questions on slide five. How would you um, describe your professional identity? What is it that, that you could say to others if someone said to you in an interview, for example, so... Describe what your professional identity looks like. Unpack that for us. How would your fellow students describe your professional identity? What about non-law family or friends? What, what would they consider? And have you given a, a thought process as to what thinking like a lawyer means? And in fact, is there a connection, do you think, between professional identity and personal conduct? And these are all issues that um, are important for you to think and reflect on as you are working towards being admitted as a legal practitioner. Now, where do we get um, ideas of professional identity? Well, yours have probably been developing for some time. Um, it may have been from when you were you know, at school, um, certainly TV and film have been very influential on what people think of lawyers. If you haven't read To Kill a Mockingbird, you may have seen the movie. Um, you may have seen Judge Judy. She's always entertaining. You might be addicted to suits like a lot of law suit students seem to be or be a fan of, of Rake or, or Janet King. Um, and it's once you've started your law degree, you then have developed a real understanding of the law, the actual basis of the law, its foundation, what precedent actually means. Before we start doing our law degree, we really don't have an understanding of that, nor of legal reasoning and theory development. And what we now are doing in practical legal training is to take that understanding into the practical application of the law and what it actually means to be a lawyer, not just to have this knowledge and to have read it or to have watched it in a movie, but how it impacts on you personally. And ultimately, you're the one who is going to be responsible um, for the professional identity that you will project, that others will think of you. And it's very important that you develop a positive professional identity. 
because that is going to bring a holistic view about you as a professional. So when you're thinking about your personal identity, for example, your own personal history, your life experiences, your personality, your feelings, importantly, your goals and your values. And those of you who are listening will all have probably a differing value system to each other. Our value system comes from our background inherently, um, how we were raised and um, our exposure to various aspects, how we've adapted, how those have influenced um, our whole value system. But personal identity is only one aspect of professional identity. You also need to have an understanding of your role identity. So your professional functions, the activities and responsibilities that actually belong to legal profession. And in addition to that, having a social identity. What actually is the place of lawyering in society? The collective commitment within the whole legal profession to values and goals. Your view on all of those things um, really culminates in your own professional identity. It's not just one factor, but all those factors coming together. Now, I'm sure that you've heard lots of jokes about lawyers. Um, I've got a few of them there on slide eight. Um, and the public perception of us isn't terribly fantastic. It certainly isn't the high point in someone's life, whether it's personal or in business, to have seen a lawyer. So I was speaking to a new client the other day, and as I was speaking to her, I was she was quite distressed about the situation she now found herself in and I was talking her through the need to look after herself and what some strategies could be put in place to to assist her and as I explained going and I, I congratulated her in fact in in contacting a lawyer because it often is um, the most difficult step to to contact a lawyer when you've got an emotional personal problem going on making that phone call to someone who you've never met and having to talk about um, very challenging personal issues. And um, even though she thought I was a very nice person to talk to, I'm sure that um, the highlight of her life's not going to, to be having a, a family lawyer as uh, a contact point um, fairly frequently until the matter is resolved. So that sort of comes also full circle to your perception of being a lawyer. And it, it, it may change, and it certainly does change, I suspect, um, for many people as you develop as a lawyer, um, as the years progress. You may start out thinking that you are this warrior advocate um, the, and the upholder of the rule of law, for example, the resolver of disputes and conflict and also the facilitator of complex transactions. They might all be a package, but um, that may well change um, having regard to, to your exposure and where you work. And your success at law school and your psychological well-being will be supported if, you, if you're encouraged to consider fundamental questions about professional, your professional identity that you're assuming and the relationship that you're professional identity has to your values and that's certainly been picked up in the book by Rachel Field, James Duffy and Anna Huggins Lawyering and Positive Professional Identities. So it can, you don't want to be in a conflictual situation where your value system isn't at one with your perception of how you want to be as a lawyer. Slide 10 has a statement of professionalism by the Law Society and it really is intrinsically linked to conduct and character. Um, and I, I'd like you to just take a moment to read that slide because it really does embody what it means to be a legal practitioner and part of the community of lawyers as regulated by the Law Society. Now John Eads is the um, president of the Law Society at the present time. Um, he acknowledges the challenge of bringing cohesion to a very diverse profession. From the large firm group 
um, in the city to country to corporate, suburban and government lawyers. There's a whole range of people that are involved in the legal profession. He uh, was a solicitor from Griffith and so he's had that exposure of country experience as well as now being um, in charge or the head of the, the Law Society and having to deal with all the differing um, challenges and expectations and in some ways conflicting um, pressures from maybe the country practitioners to the large uh, city firms. He sees the ethical obligations that lawyers undertake are for the protection of the community and that it actually is a privilege to hold a practising certificate. And with that comes the duty to act ethically. As I've said previously, ethics is not just a tick off for the Priestley 11. It continues not only in your core and elective, if you haven't yet finished, PLT throughout each of the PLT courses, but more importantly, ethics is a fundamental component of everyday practice as a legal practitioner. I just can't emphasise that enough. And one thing that I would say is that having been a lawyer for a long time, the duty to act ethically and the duty that you have as a legal practitioner to the court is um, above all um, other duties. And importantly for me, I worked very hard for my law degree, as I'm sure all of you who are listening to this lecture um, have done and are doing. Uh, law is a difficult degree. It certainly has challenges, particularly some aspects are a little bit more conceptually difficult than others. And then the application of the law, again, is another challenge. But for me, my practising certificate um, is a reflection of my hard work and of my standards. And I'm not going to put that at risk for any lawyer, for any client, um, because they are wanting um, behaviour that really is unethical or um, inappropriate and therefore would put my um, professionalism, my professional identity and my right to practice in that at risk. Professionalism is also um, uh, part of the barrister's being, so to speak. Um, and there on slide 12, um, I've just um, identified for you the uh, conduct rules which were based on the Australian Bar Association's model rules. So finally, um, just I'd like you to reflect on your professional identity and as you do, translate that into what's going to be happening in this course and then moving on to as you go into practice. How do you draft letters to clients or colleagues? How do you appear in court? How do you negotiate with colleagues? Um, your professional identity, your personal conduct, all linked to your reputation. And ultimately, you're the one that who has ultimate control as to um, how that will be seen by others, both in the legal field and outside the legal field. And that's the end of module one on this subject, on this lecture. Thank you.